So about 10 years ago, I inherited a large filing cabinet. And for years, I watched my mom keep every piece of paper known to mankind in filing cabinets and totes. And she kept years and years of paperwork sometimes decades. And I just kind of assumed that that's what you had to do to properly run a household. But boy, have I learned a few different things to really keep the paper in our home more minimal and more manageable. So today we're going to talk about how you can set up a minimal paper organization system in your home. and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin if you are new here and this is the Simply Organized Home. And today we are talking all about paper organization and how we can cut back on the paper that we keep and only keep what is absolutely necessary. So when I first started my home and I first kind of started setting up a paper organization system, I had a file for everything and I micro organized everything and that's a key term micro organizing means that you have small or lots of little categories so you're keeping everything in lots of different little categories and while that might seem like it's the best option to really organize everything it honestly just meant that I had more files to go through and dozens of drawers to keep organized. So the problem was that everything was filed in such detail that there were hundreds of files to go through. And if I ever actually needed to access one of those papers, it took me forever to try and find it. And oftentimes I never found it. Forget easy access, simple or minimal. This was none of those things. It was very detailed and it was very overwhelming. I was so sure that an organized system meant lots of little categories, lots of paper and lots of files, but I was really wrong. And as our family continued to grow, I realized that I would create new files for new situations and it only got worse over time. And the large filing cabinet that I did have was starting to burst at the seams and I knew that something needed to change. So one day when my oldest son was just a baby, we made a spur of the moment trip to one of those office supply stores and I grabbed a small plastic filing cabinet and a box of assorted colored files um, that would hang inside the cabinet. And I grabbed my label maker and I got to work. So rather than creating extremely detailed files and many, many of them, I opted for more broad labels and decided to combine different categories. And over the years, I've continued to do just that. Combining categories that don't have very many papers in them and only keeping the very bare minimum. So I decided to sort through all those papers. I purged a ton, probably 75% of the paper that I was keeping, I didn't need to keep. I am gonna post a link right here up in the iCard, and I will also post the link down below in the description box where I shared how to declutter your paper if you guys are just completely overwhelmed by your paper and you need to just sit down and declutter first before you set up an organization system. But today we are going to tackle how to organize these different papers and the different categories and how we kind of manage the paper that kind of flows in and out of our home, how we keep it minimal, how we only manage what we absolutely need to manage and we just let go of the rest. So let's talk about one of the hottest topics when it comes to paper and that is mail. As the mail comes into your home, how do you manage it? How do you handle it? How do you take care of it quickly so that it doesn't stack up on your counter and become a really overwhelming mess that you have to clean up? So my very first tip is to not have a mail bin. Don't have one of those trays or one of those pocket files where you just stuff the mail in there and then you're like, I'll deal with it later because if, even if you have a day every week that you say that you're going to sort through your mail and pay your bills, oftentimes we get to that day and um, other things have come up and we miss that day and we don't get to it and then there the paper just continues to pile up, bills continue to pile up and we just get lost in the mounds of paper in our home. So rather than having a mail bin or um, a mail tray, I definitely recommend putting it in a place that you have to deal with it immediately, whether that's right when you bring the mail in or at the very least before you go to bed at night. So for us, I just quickly sort through our mail as it comes into our house. Anything that is junk goes straight into the recycle bin. Anything that we're not gonna use, if it's something that needs to be shredded, I will just shred it and throw it right away right then. It doesn't take me but maybe 30 to 60 seconds to just sort through the mail as it comes into my house. 
And usually I go from anywhere from five to eight pieces of mail down to one or two. Just doing those really quick tasks that make it much more manageable. If we receive a bill in the mail that needs to be paid right away, most of our bills we pay online. They are automatically paid for us and I highly recommend doing that if you can. Just set up those auto payments and then if you get a statement in the mail, you can either keep it for up to a year or if it's something that you can access online, just purge it right away. However, if it's a bill that needs to be paid, you need to write a check out, you need to go online and pay it yourself and kind of um, do a little bit of legwork with it, then I recommend putting it in a place where you will have to tackle it before the end of the day. So for us, I set it on top of my computer. So whenever a bill comes in the mail, I will just set that on the computer or I just go ahead and pay it right then. If I have the two or three minutes to sit down and pay the bill, I'll just do it. I have noticed that just taking care of that task, it gets it out of my head. I find that when I just let those bills it sit there in the back of my head and I think about them throughout the day, then that's all I'm thinking about. I gotta pay that bill, I gotta pay that bill, I gotta pay that bill, I don't wanna forget. Even though it's sitting on my desk and I know that I have to pay it, it's still kind of like eating at me in the back of my head. I don't know if you guys have the same feeling, but I definitely have that feeling. So instead, I just try to pay it right then. And I notice that I just get it ready. And then once the bill is ready, I will set it on my shoe cabinet, which is right by my front door. And I or my husband will put it up out in the mail the next day. As far as coupons that come into our house, I only keep coupons that I either know I will use or might use with the intention of leaning towards I probably will use it before it expires. I throw away 90% of the coupons that come into our house. If it's a coupon that I do plan to keep, then I have a reference file that it goes into. It's actually back here behind me, right above my desk. And about once every three to four weeks, I will sort through that reference file. If it's a coupon that I didn't end up using, it will go ahead and get purged, but that way I know where to look for it. If it's something that I will use more in a store and I need to have it with me, like I get Bath & Body Works coupons in the mail, I stick those directly into my wallet so that I always have them if I am out shopping. As far as invitations go, if we get an invitation to a wedding or a baby shower, maybe a save the date for something, I will immediately put it either in my planner or calendar, which I have one of each. I try to put it on both, that way I always remember. And then I just dispose of it. Unless it has really important information that I need to have for the event, like an address or maybe a, a registry information, that kind of thing, then it will go into my reference file. Again, sort through that once a month. That gets purged when it needs to get purged and I'm through with it. So I have, have a place to put those papers where it's something that I'm going to reference in the next month or two or three months at the very most probably and then they do get purged eventually. So those are not things that I'm going to keep long term. They are just things that are there for me to reference as I need to. As far as magazines and catalogs, we don't really get a lot of magazines. My husband gets one he reads it and then just recycles it when he's done. My kids get a couple magazines that their grandparents subscribe them to. Again, they look at it, spend maybe a week or two looking through it. And then once I see it laying around and nobody is taking care of it anymore, then it gets recycled and that's okay. That's what they're for. Um, we don't have a lot of magazines and if it's a catalog that we don't necessarily need or plan to look at, it gets disposed of right away. If it's something I plan to look at, then I just put it on my nightstand, look at it when I have a chance over the next couple days, and then we recycle it. If we get important papers in the mail that need to be filed and we need to keep, um, maybe it's an insurance statement, uh, maybe it's something for our mortgage, maybe it's, you know, there's lots of different things that you might get in the mail that you might need to keep, tax documents, that kind of thing we will put those into our filing cabinet. So those are the only papers that are getting put into our filing cabinet. And every year I go through and I sort through that filing cabinet. But if I don't have time to put it in my filing cabinet, I do have a second pocket above my desk where I put two file items. So I try to just put it straight into the filing cabinet if I can. If it's not something that I have the time to look over if it's something that needs me to have some action taken to it before I file it away, then it will go into that two file bin. And again, about once a month, I will go through both of those files, file away the papers that need to be filed away and dispose of anything else. So I hope that explains how we handle mail in our house. Again, it doesn't take us very long. We try to take action on things immediately. I try not to let things pile up because I know what happens when 
those stacks of mail day after day after day just continue to make a, a paper mountain on our kitchen counters. It's overwhelming. It's frustrating. We don't even want to look at it. We don't want to know what's in there. And that's not how we should be handling paper. We should be handling it quickly and efficiently and only keeping the minimal amount that we need to keep. So we are actually a homeschool family. So we no longer have school papers coming into our home besides the mounds of homeschool papers that we have in our house, which do exist. If you're a homeschool mama, you feel me. Um, but if you are not and your kids go to a public school or a private school and they're constantly bringing home paper, then those papers generally fit into one of three categories. The different categories are information, action required, or schoolwork. So if you get something from your inf in the information category, that's going to be things that need to be added to your calendar, things that maybe it's like a school menu or different events that are gonna be taking place at the school. Those are informational. So my recommendation is add those to your calendar, add those to your planner and dispose of them. If it is something that you need to reference over the next month, like a school menu, then put it in a reference file, just like the one I have behind me and keep it for that short term purpose. And then remember to go through that file about once a month and purge out what you don't need. Action required papers are things that need to be signed and returned to school or maybe you need to send in money for your child for some event or uh, maybe lunch money, all kinds of different things that you need to take action on something and then return it back to school. So my recommendation, do it immediately. As soon as you pull that out, take the one or two minutes because that's generally all it takes and just deal with it, handle it right then as soon as you see it and put it back into your child's backpack or folder or whatever and be done with it. That way it is off of your mind. It's not something that you're constantly thinking of, kind of like those bills, and it is taken care of. The last thing is schoolwork and oh, the schoolwork. <laughs> the amount of papers that your kids will bring home when they start public school or private school, it, it will completely mind boggle you, the amount of stuff that they do. And it's wonderful and good and we're so proud of our kids. However, we cannot keep it all. So my recommendation is, to only keep those items that are really, really important, whether it might be a big project, maybe they did really good on a test, maybe they did good on, a, on a, an assignment that they've been really struggling on and then they worked really hard and got a good grade on an assignment. I recommend to just only be very, very particular and only keep the very best of the best. I have a filing box for each of my kids for all of their schoolwork and they have a file for each grade. So every grade, they I try to keep somewhere between three and five really excellent papers, whether that is a graded math test, a written assignment of some sort, maybe an art project. I try to kind of be really um, diverse in what I do keep, but I keep it really minimal because I know that when I graduated from college, my mom handed me several boxes full of my paperwork and it was so overwhelming to me that I think I just took it and ended up tossing most of it, which, sorry, mom. But I don't want my kids to have to do that. I want my kids to be able to look back and only see the very best of the best, the things that they're most proud of, and that's all we keep. So I ask my kids, you know, is this something you're really proud of? Um, is this something that you really enjoy doing? Did you have fun doing the process of this? And I realize girls are gonna be a lot different than boys. Girls are probably gonna to wanna to keep everything and girl and boys are whatever, mom, keep whatever you want. That's at least how my boys are. Um, but just be picky, be picky as you go through the schoolwork. Another type of paper that can get out of hand in our house are recipes. So if you're somebody who enjoys cooking, maybe you enjoy finding new recipes on Pinterest or searching through lots of cookbooks, then you might have some issues with paper clutter when it comes to recipes. So my recommendation is create a recipe binder. In that recipe binder, only keep your family's favorite recipes. Not recipes you haven't tried yet, not recipes that you plan to try in the future, but only the tried and true favorites. And that's what we do. We have a binder for all of our main dish dinner recipes, I guess you would call it, and then a binder for our dessert type recipes. So really simplify your recipes, only keep your tried and true, and don't print a recipe until you've tried it. So try the recipe, pin it on Pinterest, give it a try. If, you, if your family loves it, then print it out and add it to your tried and true recipe binder. But until then, let Pinterest hold on to it, 
Don't waste paper and don't waste ink printing out all those recipes. Let's talk about warranties and manuals. I talked about these in my last video on how to really simplify and purge. Most of the time, warranties do not actually cover that much, but I think that if you need to keep them, if you feel the need to keep them, have one file for all of your warranties and that be it. As far as manuals go, I don't think we need to keep any of them, to be perfectly honest. So pretty much everything you find, anything you buy, you can find the manual online. So if you need to get to the manual for some reason, which, you know, chances are probably one in a hundred that you're going to actually need a manual for something, then you can always find it online. So I recommend purging all manuals and only keeping warranties on things that you actually might use the warranty on. If it's something like a toaster that has a warranty and five years down the line, you still have that warranty and the toaster breaks. Are you going to actually go into your warranty file to find the warranty on your toaster that probably costs $20 or are you going to go to Target and just buy a new toaster? Chances are you're probably just going to go buy a new toaster. So purge anything that is not absolutely 100% necessary to keep. Now let's tackle receipts. We only keep about 1% of the receipts that come into our house. So many receipts anymore are online. If you shop um, at Target, all of your receipts can be found online if you use the app. If you shop on Amazon, those are all stored for you as far as everything else goes. I just don't feel like we need to keep our receipts very often, especially if you're using your debit card. Most stores can actually look up your purchase just by swiping your debit card and they can view all of the information that would be on your receipt. If you do use cash and you buy something that you think might be returned, then have a small envelope that you keep in like your reference file and only keep those for a short time because chances are after a month or two, you're not going to need to return that item. You're not gonna be able to return that item. If you make a large purchase like furniture or maybe a piece of exercise equipment, if it's an online receipt, just store it online. If it's something that you did get a receipt for that you feel the need to keep, have one file in your filing cabinet for receipts. And then every year purge those receipts because you probably won't need them after a year. As far as budgets go, I think sometimes if you're a paper pencil girl, kind of like I am, um, or used to be, I'm definitely moving more digital with my budget. Uh, this year I'm using my digital budgeting binder or budget template, which I will definitely leave a link down below, which I'm really enjoying. But if you do keep a paper binder and use a budget binder, which again, link down below for the budget binder, then those papers can definitely kind of scatter about and get out of hand as well. I would recommend just keeping everything inside one binder, inside one folder, or inside one notebook. And don't have papers here and there because if it's your budget, then it should be important. And if it's important, then we need to take care of it. So keep track of those budgets, keep track of those papers, keep them organized, even if it's just a simple notebook, Keep that organized, keep it in a place where you can get to it quickly. You could even put it inside your reference file if it's something that you need to grab very frequently, which a budget, you're probably looking at that at least multiple times a week. Um, and so definitely keep that handy, but don't feel like you have to go over and above as far as your budget goes. I think we can keep it simple and we can still maintain a budget in our home. Now, getting into our filing system. Our filing system is only for our long-term storage. All the other things that I have talked about so far are more of a short-term storage. So they are things that I probably will only keep for a month or so, maybe even less. Long-term storage is stuff that I'm going to keep for at least a year or longer. So I have a filing cabinet and I have set up a system. I have been told that it's very similar to the Freedom Filer. I think it is probably similar. I've not done a lot of research on the Freedom Filer, but I have categories. So I have insurance in a category. I have finances in a category. I have medical in a category and I keep those categories organized into different colors. And so each, each color only contains anywhere from you know, maybe five to seven files because I like to keep it simple, but I keep things in those files that we may need to access in the future and I cannot access online. If it is a file, if it is a statement of some sort that I can access online, there's really no need for me to keep that. I also keep taxes for seven years. I know I've been told by some people 
that you only need to keep three years worth of taxes. However, I do run a small business, so I do keep seven years worth of taxes. My mom and dad have always kept seven years worth of taxes. I think that that, for me, my tax documents only take up one file in my cabinet. So I have seven files worth of, cap of, worth of tax documents and it's not taking up that much space. So that is what I keep. Again, I am not a tax expert. I am not a professional when it comes to this. So just take what I say with a grain of salt and definitely do your own research. I will leave a link down in the description box below to a blog post where I share how I set up my entire filing system and how you guys can use the same kind of method that I used and do it really cheaply because I definitely did it on a budget and really minimize and organize your filing system to where you're only keeping what you absolutely have to. You can find what you need in a snap. I'm telling you, I can find papers in 10 seconds or less. So definitely, I will definitely leave a link down below for that because I really think that this filing system, it's something I have used, like I said, for eight or nine years now and it's still going strong. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I definitely share videos on organization, decluttering, cleaning, and simple living. So if that is your thing, definitely stick around. And I will leave a link down below to my Instagram so that you guys can come follow me over there. I share all kinds of simple living and decluttering tips on how to simplify your home every single day and how you can make your home a place that you love to be. So if that's your thing, make sure to head over there and follow along. I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys. I lose my breath whenever I see you. You stole my heart, what is it that you do?